Hi, greetings from Portugal. It's a beautiful sunny afternoon in December and um, I'm by the side of the eighth hole, the signature hole at Praia del Rey Golf Course. It's a beautiful hole, a demanding par three, and there's quite an interesting story attached to this hole. Now, as some of you know, I work as an elite performance director on the uh, uh, European Golf Tour and the World Poker Tours, uh, as well as being uh, a writer and a presenter. And I'm not working here at the moment uh, in a golf capacity, but I'm here to interview a client who is a golfer and has a quite remarkable, almost unbelievable story to tell. So come with me into the studio and we're going to interview Caroline. Hi Caroline. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And um, a little bird told me, in fact you can probably hear them in the background now, that uh, you've got quite an incredible story to tell. Yes, my sixth hole in one was yesterday. Um, I enjoyed that. Did I hear you correctly? Did How many holes in one did you have? That was hole in one, number six. And um, it was, um, as usual, came out of the blue, but I'm always expecting one. So I wasn't too surprised, but... Okay, let me just uh, hold you there for a moment because um, I know some of our viewers will be working out some mental arithmetic right now and they'll be calculating the, the chances of a person having six holes in one in a golfing career, um, let alone just a, a few years as you're going to explain later, are astronomical. So there will also be some viewers who will want to know, is this really the truth or is this some kind of story that uh, you or I or both of us are embellishing? So I'm going to ask you a straight question and just bear in mind that this video is probably going to be watched by thousands, possibly even millions of people. Mm -hmm. The question is, uh, you've just said that you've scored six holes in one. Mm -hmm. Is this the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Oh, it is. So sure. you, you yes. pr promise on whatever it is that you <laughs> hold sacred that this is um, not some fanciful embellishment. You okay. didn't get, just get near the pin, but it actually went into the hole. Uh, I had witnesses, so... Okay, yeah. well, there we are. You have witnesses, and, and indeed uh, I, I've even been a witness on, I think, at least two of those occasions. Um, but what about... Uh, so j just tell me... You know, where did this, you know, run of uh, incredible aces at golf, wh when did it start and, and what were the circumstances? Actually, it started a few years ago when um, I was having some problems with my golf and not really playing as well as I wanted to. And so that's when I started the coaching with you. And I don't know what happened, a, a, a switch changed, switch switched or something clicked. But I suddenly had three holes in one in six months. And then um, it went... Can I just stop you there? Um, what were the circumstances of those three holes in one? Were they when you were playing on your own, perhaps, or playing in no. competitions? I mean, I'm just trying to sort of... Uh, one, this one um, actually, no, they were in competitions. And uh, one was a big competition. In actual fact, I didn't really want to play in it because I hadn't slept the night before. Uh, I'd been very busy, and but I played because I had a partner to play with, and so obviously I went. And it just, I didn't see it go in the hole. I hit a good ball, and it went in the hole. And sometimes that seems to happen. It happens, well, it does happen when you're least expecting. And um, I don't know where your mind is, but just, I was relaxed. Well, I'm here, I'm going to play, and... Next thing I know, I had all in one, and that's happened a couple of times like that. So I think I always see that as a good sign. So it's a well, it, it definitely yeah. is, and I think everybody would, would would agree with that. Now, of course, I better explain uh, now that in fact Caroline was my first client in my new career that started uh, just over eight years ago, and uh, more than that. Uh, because when you start out in a new career, a clients are not easy to find, so you often rely on friends and family. And Caroline, in fact, is my wife, which again was why I wanted to stress the authenticity of, of this story to make sure that we weren't just concocting little, little fairy tales between ourselves. So I, I had done some uh, advanced psychological training, and I wanted to try these techniques out, out on you. And 
uh, they were stunningly successful. In, if, if indeed, you know, a hole in one is the measure of success. Now, uh, from a personal point of view, if I was going to uh, produce a result at such long odds as that, uh, my choice would have been for you to win the lottery. Yes. But you yes. chose, or, or something chose you yeah. to do this in the world of golf. So, if you can remember the first session that we had and the various things that we talked about, um, in just a, a few words, what do you think was the difference like before that session and after that session? Because the results came pretty fast and they weren't just holes in one, but they were winning a series of golf competitions and your handicap dropping and uh, all the other sort of measures of success in golf too. Um, I think actually the most important thing I would say would be visualisation and also a calm mind. To, and um, I, I know that's what happened with yesterday's. I know that I always, everybody always looks at the pin and thinks, well, you're hoping you're going to be facing the right way, you're going to make a plan, and then you hit the ball. But I, I know that um, some, something happened, it was a pairs competition, that my friend and I, both of our husbands, had just hit the ball in the water. We were to, thought I'd mention that one. And then we said, OK, no pressure, we need to have a good shot. And I got up under the tee and did a normal shot. You put that out of your mind. My mind was very quiet and just strong and hit the ball. And it suddenly just it, it landed and just ran straight in the hole. And it's a really good feeling. It, it's a happy feeling. It was, and it was for everybody. We enjoyed it. And this indeed was the hole in your latest, uh, number six, which was um, yesterday. And um, I've mentioned already that uh, we actually live right next to this hole, and this is where we're filming today. And uh, indeed, there were witnesses, for sure. And uh, thank you for reminding us all, um, <laughs> myself and John, my playing partner, that uh, both of our balls, uh, not for the first time, ended up in the lake. So you mentioned um, uh, visualisation and calmness, and these are words mm -hmm. that um, uh, sports coaches and psychologists talk about a lot, and teachers, many other people too. Uh, but they're also words that can be misunderstood. So uh, tell us a little more about uh, what visualisation means to you and what do you go through in your mind that uh, I suppose produces a picture which becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy? I always have a good look at the hole for two seconds or three seconds. It doesn't, it's not a lengthy procedure. I have a good look, imagine the ball going in, where I'd want to land it, and then put my head back down again and just make a, the best swing as I can. And sometimes it works and sometimes it's, it doesn't, but it, it's, 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 it's a good way of starting the process. It has worked for me. Well, it's worked on six occasions, which means that there are many hundreds of occasions when it hasn't worked. And I suppose the message there is that just because your first ball doesn't go in the hole, it doesn't mean that you give up golf. Uh, there wouldn't be many people playing golf if, if that was the case. And visualisation certainly is important. When I talk to my clients, we spend a lot of time talking about that. Because the truth is that people who can see a clear picture in their mind are much more likely to achieve whatever it is. And we're not just talking about golf here, we're talking about um, professional poker, where one of my clients is one of the best players in the world or business people, or just people, you know, ordinary people like you and I, who um, are trying to bring uh, more health, wealth and happiness into our lives, in, in what, whatever those words mean to us. Indeed, I was playing with a, somebody a few months ago, he wasn't a client, but we were on a par three hole, and he just said before he teed off, he said, um, you know, I've never had a hole in one. His name was Martin, and I said to him, Martin, well, what are you thinking about? when you're on the tee and he said well I'm just trying to you know think of getting the ball as near to the hole as I can so I said well is there a better way to think than that and he looked at me and he kind of got it and he said well I suppose I could think of the ball going in the hole and I said well you could Martin but the funny thing was I had an email from him a week later and sure enough he'd just got his first hole in one on exactly the hole where we'd had this conversation a week previously. So visualisation is, um, I think you would agree, Caroline, is uh, definitely an important part of mm -hmm. success. 
And so, I mean, do you use visualization in any other part of your life? Um, oh, I think I do. I haven't thought about it so consciously. I don't think I do visualize um, colors and, and room schemes. And yeah, I think I do think about in pictures, actually. Yeah, maybe I haven't thought about that too much. Yeah, indeed, and and uh, of course it's not just Caroline. I mean, we can go through history and we can find examples from people who achieve stuff, and um, even and oddly enough, even blind people. And vision, they will all say that visualization is important. I mean, Professor Albert Einstein, who is about a million times more intelligent than I am, he said um, he said I rarely think in terms of words. I, I think in pictures, in, in images. So if it's good enough for him, I think it's probably you know, good enough for us. Now, the other thing that you mentioned was, was calmness. Mm -hmm. um, now, it's very hard to produce, uh, you know, when I coach athletes or anybody for that matter, uh, people always want to get the best possible the results that they can. And it's very hard to find peak performance if you're tense and stressed. Uh, in fact, I'd say it's probably impossible. Um, so I think we can agree that peak performance comes from a calm mind. So uh, Caroline, uh, explain a little more about what a calm mind uh, is to you and, and how, can, um, how can viewers find uh, this calm state of mind as well? Actually, I find it very difficult to explain how to get it. I can explain it. It comes and there's nothing going on for a couple of seconds and it's a very comfortable feeling. It's a really, but it's, it's, I'm not quite sure how I achieve that, but I, I can. Um, it's, it, it's, it's becoming more automatic and I think it's just breathing and a couple of deep breaths, move on. And I know that I, it, that I can have a clear, empty mind and, and that, it, you, that things are much more comfortable in that situation. It's yeah. very hard to describe, actually. It, it, it is hard to describe, and I, and I was kind of guessing that that's what you were going to say, because when I talk to my other clients, especially when they've just done something really amazing, they find it similarly hard to explain what this calm mind is. Now, there are some proven techniques that will help, and I'm, uh, those of you who read my blogs uh, or have come to my workshops know that uh, I practice what I preach in as much as that I meditate every day, and, um, and uh, uh, that helps me to be calm, especially when I'm doing something that, uh, that most people, or even I, what I would find, as would most people, quite stressful. And you, you don't do any meditation, uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge, but you did mention the importance of breathing, how you take a couple of deep breaths. And it can be just about as simple as that, quite frankly. Uh, you don't need to learn how to do meditation, although please don't let that put anybody off learning, because I think it's uh, worth every penny and every minute that you spend on it. But we know from working in hospitals and things that it's very, in fact, it's impossible to be calm when you're breathing fast. And um, equally, it's uh, impossible to be stressed when you're breathing slowly. And so breathing is something that we can control under almost all circumstances. So I think that's a takeaway message for people, for sure. So that's visualization, that's calmness. Uh, people might call that, um, you know, living in the moment or mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, any, anything else that comes to mind? Um, well, actually I know I do, there's one thing I definitely do is that sometimes if it's a tough shot or you think, oh, there's a strong wind or this is going to, no, oh, there's going to be a problem. I can I stop that thought and I if I consciously smile, that makes a smile rather it makes a, a better feeling about something, and then I get on and, and do it. Think oh it's okay. It, it's a it's, it, for me it's a trick that I can get out of a bad negative feeling. Yeah, and I, I, of course I you know we haven't scripted this interview and I didn't know what you're going to say, but but that definitely is true. Smiling has got immense positive properties. Uh, this falls into the bucket of physiological responses, just like slow breathing produces relaxation. Um, so does um, 
the the smiling, the smiling, yeah. yeah. And uh, if you don't believe me, then get a pencil and put it between your lips and hold it. Because just to hold that pencil in place, it uses all of those muscles of the mouth that are used in smiling, which tricks the body into this physiological response and releases hormones, uh, neurotransmitters mm. like dopamine and all the others. So, yeah, and I've noticed when you play golf, you often do smile at the ball. Uh, maybe that's probably what I should do more of than even to <laughs> go into the lake so often. <laughs> okay, now um, we also uh, we also used uh, uh, that time... Um, I have more techniques uh, at my fingertips now than I did eight years ago. But one of the techniques that I found immensely valuable and still do is, is that of hypnosis. Mm -hmm. And um, perhaps you would uh, share a few, share your thoughts about the benefits or otherwise of hypnosis. I love hypnosis. It's, it's uh, not something you're necessarily aware of, but to be in a nice, comfortable state where you you can feel that you're behave, you're performing and behaving at your best without tension or worrying about it. I don't know. I'm now I'm worried I might be addicted to hypnosis. I might be a problem. <laughs> um, well, I don't, I don't think it would be a problem. I, I think people can get addicted to a positive mental state, and I, I personally don't have a problem with that. If that's an addiction, I think there are worse things in life to become addicted to than that. Um, now, very often when somebody has been hypnotized, their friends will say, what was it like? Uh, you know, did you go under? How deep did you go? Uh, how would you answer a question, uh, a question like that? Um, it, it's a nice dreamlike state, but then actually um, afterwards, it's, you're, you're quite, you're alert. It's a calm alertness which is it's so difficult to describe, but yeah, it's a very comfortable, calm, alert place. Nothing yeah. worries you. There's no drama. Or... In, indeed it is, and I, I've just uh, finished writing my book. Uh, I don't quite know what the title is going to be just yet, but it's about luck and the, the secrets of being a lucky person, and I think Caroline has been lucky in golf. She has yet sh sh uh, failed to demonstrate any luck in winning the lottery, but tomorrow's a new day, as they say. Um, and uh, hypnosis I, I've listed as one of the seven secrets of being a lucky person and when I was writing this chapter of the book I have to say I found it difficult to describe hypnosis even though you know I'm, I'm considered to be you know, quite a good hip hypnotist and, and I certainly use it a lot on my clients and on myself but um, it, it is very much like a dreamlike state. It's, it's a twilight in, in between sleeping and waking. And it can be very deep indeed, so that clients remember nothing when they come out of trance, or it can be very light. And just because a trance is light doesn't mean that it can't be incredibly powerful. In fact, uh, in, in my work, I try to produce the lightest trance possible that will produce the results mm -hmm. that the client and the therapist want. So, um, anything else? What would, you, what would you say to a golfer who's watching this, who for some crazy reason has never had a hole-in-one in their life and desperately, desperately wants it? Because holes-in-one, people are so keen to have one, uh, and they, when they've got it, it's like they stop thinking about it after that, usually. Anyway, so what, did, uh, what would you say to somebody who really wants a hole-in-one? Um, I would say visualise it and expect one. You will have one. Expect it. Yeah. Thoughts become things, as it says in The Secret. And I think uh, Henry Ford said, uh, if you think you can, you will. And if you think you can't, you won't. So there is food for thought. Um, so, Caroline, thank you for agreeing to come on our show from thank Portugal you. on this lovely uh, Sunday afternoon. And uh, thank you, viewers, for your interest. There will be more interviews coming. And in the meantime... Uh, we are always here to have your feedback. Uh, you have any questions, you're welcome to email, email me. My address is on my website. And uh, if you've got some lucky stories, we always definitely want to hear all about that. So thanks again, and I will see you soon. Goodbye from Portugal.